Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat, my daily broadcast. This is episode number 488, I'm getting close to 500 now. And the topic today is if at first you don't succeed, wait. And I'm going to explain what that means and get into it shortly. But before I do that, let me introduce myself and what these talks are about. My name is Barry Selby. In case you didn't figure that out from watching my broadcast, I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day I do these talks on Facebook Live initially, but then go to YouTube and also onto my podcast called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is number 488 in an ongoing series of talks, as I said, over a year and a half, year and three quarters now, it's been a while. And the topic today, I'm going to apply it to relationships, but I may give you some examples from my own life because I've had a few of these that if at first you don't succeed, wait. So I'll explain that and give you some samples. So if you're in here for the first time, thanks for joining me. Feel free to share this out with anybody you think should, should watch this or they may want to wait to see what I'm talking about first. And feel free to put any comments, questions in now live. And if you're watching the replay, do the same thing and I'll respond afterwards in the comments as well. I think that's the preamble out of the way. Let's jump in. So, um, this, this, this has come up a lot lately for me in my personal life and it also came up in um, my relationship experiences too. I'm just referring back to some memories. So excuse me a second. Okay, well, that was a giveaway. You must realize I'm a visual, I have visual um, focus because I looked up for memory. Sorry, that's an NLP term. So anyway, getting back on track. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, wait. I'm using a current example first because it's right in my face at the moment. Um, and then I'll apply it to relationships. In the past two months, middle of August, yes, two months, um, I've been in the process, I'm actually one of the authors in a book that's coming out next week, yes, next week, um, and I'll tell you about that shortly, that we were originally going to publish in August. And this book's been on, on the uh, development creation stage for quite a while, um, well, almost a year, that's not a long time in book terms, but it's certainly been a while for us. We hired a publisher to get a book done. And they screwed it up completely. I'm going to be simple about it. We had this book put together, prepared, and we had lots of things in the book to um, to fix and edit and polish. And that was their job as a publisher was to to really um, refine, polish the book to make it work properly. And including in the book were. Um, ads that we put in the book that were supposed to be formatted to fit, but we were never told what the sizes were, so they were the wrong size. There were editing marks in the book, comments in the book that some of the authors have put as editing notes, say in, print, in square brackets saying, please check this out and make sure it's right, if not remove it, that were in the finished book that was printed. The publisher basically didn't do their job, they charged us a lot of money, and they didn't produce the results we wanted. Now, I can say, oh, we're going to cry about this and make it how bad it is, but there's a, there's a blessing in this, and I'll get to that in a second, hence the waiting part. So the bottom line was the book got published incorrectly, done wrong, and the publisher's not been forthcoming with all the things we need to do. Now, if at first you don't succeed, it applies to that, because <laughs> it didn't work. So about two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago now? I think it was two weeks ago, my coach and the main person in the book and myself were talking, and she had this amazing idea. She downloaded this idea saying, you know what? Because we've got this book sitting there, we're creating, we're producing it, we're actually launching it next week, as I mentioned. Let's start our own publishing company. And I was like, say what? But as I sat with that, I realized that this makes a total amount of sense. First of all, we get to publish our own book as a publishing house, so we will have a first book under our wings. Secondly, between the two of us, we have a pretty big background in publishing online, publishing traditionally, printing, designing, and there's a bunch of other stuff that collectively we've got a lot of skills for. And it's not even what I'm doing as my business, but having published my own book, self-published, and helped four other authors publish their books, four, that's four, not three, four, other book authors published their books over the last four or five years, I've had some practice. And so what we're doing now is publishing our book under our own publishing company, and it's going to be out next week. We've also got four or five people already interested in working with us because they're finding, it, finding out what we're doing. So I'm saying that to say, not to say you should come work with us, of course if you have a book, talk to me. But I'm saying it to say that there was a blessing after the um, 
curse. <laughs> I'm trying to think what the opposite of blessing is in this context. The curse of that bad experience, the challenge of that bad experience, the first publisher we worked with screwed us up big time. And we still have some resolution, like getting your money back and getting some of the sales back and a few other things too. But the good news is on the other side is that we now have a whole new paradigm, which is we have our own publishing company. So we've now invented something, created something from what happened that's way better than we had before. And we can make more money out of it because people are going to work with us. We're becoming their publishing house, which is amazing. So that's one example I want to give you as current. Now I want to throw back a bit to the previous times. I have had several experiences of my life in career level stuff where first um, offers weren't as good as the second offer. And this is what I want to speak to because it's true about relationships too. I just want to say how to present it. So again, speaking from my own life, I have had, well, I know for certain I wouldn't be living in this country if it hadn't been for an offer I missed and got a better offer the second time. So the teaching I want to give you in this piece, which is a key, is back in that experience, again, on the career track, I was in college at the time and was, um, actually it was polytechnic. In England, it's called a polytechnic or a trade school. So that you work for the first year, then you go out to work in the corporate world. And at that time, they were taking putting these interviews for these jobs, and a lot of these came up. I missed the first opportunity. I, it didn't line up for me. And it was a pretty good job. It was in a science company. It was, in, it was paying pretty well per hour, but it didn't really work out. So I was one of the last people to get placed. Excuse me. The last job offer that came through was the best one of the lot. I got to work for a commercial company down in the middle of London that actually got me hired in the, got to place me in their German office. I got the best gift of all because one, it was the highest rate, two, it was a great company and location, and three, I got to travel internationally, which none of the other job offers did. So missing the first opportunity was would pay dividends on the second one that came through. So I think you got my point about how if a first you don't succeed, wait, because something better is coming. And let's apply that now to relationships, because I'm sure that's what you're asking about, because this is the arena I play in. I'm looking back at a couple of my relationships, and I know, <laughs> and I'm gonna be careful I say this politely, I know firmly that for many of some, quite a few of my past relationships, the ones I wanted didn't line up, the ones I got were better. And I'm saying this very simplistically, but the reality is for me that sometimes that thing you want most and you want to go for the hold on, hold on to for the most can seem so good at the time, but when you look back in hindsight, 2020 hindsight, you may notice that what that was is nowhere near as good as what you end up choosing instead or being offered instead or finding instead. So my lesson or my teaching here is simple. If you don't get what you want, don't curse the darkness. Don't curse the situation. It's quite possible that that thing that didn't work out would end up being a pain to pay down the road. A pain or a price to pay down the road. Let me say it that way. So an example from one of my past relationships. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I say, I say this, I don't, I don't want to claim, don't want to out any names, I want to say this clearly. But in one of the relationships I remember, um, We had some dates that didn't get to relationship. It was like I was so I was so into her. She was gonna. Be, I thought it was gonna be amazing, and I and I ended up basically screwing up. So I got. I didn't. I didn't go to get into the relationship. Although we were on a few dates and it ended abruptly. I'm just. I'm editing as I'm saying this. Why it's coming a bit chopped. She met somebody else, which I was upset about because I was still invested, and it turns out that she um, she cheated on him. And she was a bit abusive too. She, was, she wasn't very invested emotionally. And I'm realizing that I dodged a bullet. Yes, I dodged a bullet. Now, some of you out there are gonna go, yeah, I've had some relationships where I dodged a bullet. Or I should say, avoided relationships, so you dodged a bullet. Metaphorically speaking, let me be clear. So I'm very clear that I don't always have control of what, what I choose in terms, of, I think there's a bigger plan going on. Like, you know, somebody up there is looking after me. So the lesson I'm offering here around love and relationships is, you may have a heart set on a certain person or a certain profile online. And your fixation on that may be your undoing. By being willing to let go of that attachment to that perfect result, you might find yourself, first of all, discovering that perfect result isn't so perfect after all. And secondly, you might find that you'll meet somebody who's even better than you thought it could be. In fact, I would almost guarantee it because there's a certain piece that when you let go of the stress of that fixation, you expand and open up to a bigger possibility. And it's not a scientific thing. This is an energetic and it's a, I would say it's a spiritual thing almost, or a metaphysical thing. One of the things I've learned very big time, the lessons I've learned big time is, 
there are gifts that come through when you think they're curses. One more slight example from my own journey, my personal growth journey. As you, if you watch my broadcast, you know that for me, my spiritual center is Agape International Spiritual Center in, Co sorry, was in Cobble City, now in Beverly Hills, in the interim. I had some things happen, and I'm not going to get the details. I was very involved running a ministry there, the actually the ushers and and the um, greeter ministry, which is basically people who hand out the programs and make sure it was taken care of and all that sort of stuff. I ran it for ten years. I was the director of it. Something happened where. Well, I'm going to say it this way. Somebody in the congregation decided they want to get me um, in trouble. So they basically reported something that didn't happen. Actually, it was a reverse me too, to be honest. And I got, frankly, summarily um, evicted from the ministry. Now, I want to say this because I want to make sure you get this thing. At the time, it was really upsetting because I was very invested in it. But the blessing that came out of that was I didn't realize how much I was so committed time-wise to that ministry, I couldn't move forward on my work. My book was already in development, but I couldn't finish it because I had no time for it. Being um, kicked out of that ministry gave me my time back. And in fact, I finished my book in pretty short order. So my first book got published because I'd lost that role. Now, some of you go, well, yeah, it's a volunteering. But it was my heart at the time. It was my joy. Yet the realization was it wasn't serving me. Now I go back, and the funny thing is, uh, and now I'm, I volunteer with guest relations. And I'm not in charge, so I have a lot less load on my plate, and I have more fun. So the, the waiting thing, the waiting piece of this conversation is I got a better result. More fun, less stress, more connection, and freedom to do what I want to do. That to me was a win. So my, my um, invitation to you is don't be so attached to the results that you want. Don't be so attached to the thing that you think you see, the perfect car. I've had cars, that's happened in my life too, where I was attached to a certain car, the deal didn't work out, I got a better car second that was a better car than I could have got the first time. So I'm saying to you in the area of love and relationships, if you're single and looking for love and you're fixated on a certain type of person, be willing to open up to possibility. And if you let go of what that primary focus is, something better may come your way. Now, I'd like to hear your stories about this. And I'm going to say this this way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a homework assignment, which is this. You have the possibility in your life of having experienced that, where either you attached to the first result and didn't work out the way you wanted, or you didn't get the first thing and the something came along later that was even better than the first choice. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any stories and ideas like that, share them with me. I want to, I want to find out if this is not, if I'm just unique. <laughs> Maybe I am. But I'm curious to know if you've had experiences like, your, that, like that yourself. So feel free to put in the comments or, or message me that information. And a couple of things. If you are get, looking to get your book published, please send a message to me, email me or, or connect to me if you know, you know where to find me. And secondly, if you are looking to work with a publisher and you want to know who the other one is, I'm not going to put it out publicly, but if you, want to, if you want to run by me the publishers you're working with, let me know and I will let you know if that's one of them or not. Uh, if, if that publishes one of them or not. I'm going to keep it clean because I don't want to put anything on slanderous out here, but I also want to protect my friends. So I, if you're about to get book published somewhere else, you're not working with us, shame on you. Um, if you're invested with somebody, let me know who you're working with because if it's the one, I, the one I, we work with, I will give you some um, cautionary advice. All right, enough of that. I've got to go because I've actually got to dash off to go see my friends. So here's the thing. This is a double Facebook Live tonight. I'm doing my own one now at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which I do every day in case you haven't seen this live. I'm also going to be doing a live broadcast with my friend Gina Hendricks in about an hour, an hour, hour and 15, so probably 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Join me on my page, uh, right here on my profile, and also join it on her page if you're one of her followers. So we're doing one which is basically it's Gina and Barry doing it live. Yeah, that's the name. Um, at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. And speaking of that, this is my own Facebook Live I do every day. It's on my business page. Sorry, it's archived on my business page, which is um, Barry Selby, the author on Facebook. It also gets repurposed on my YouTube channel. And you can search for all my replays under the messages, messages from the Masculine playlist on my channel, which is Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, and so is my website, barryselby.com. And thirdly, you can listen to my podcast, which is these replayed in audio format, slowly but surely adding to my list over there. If you go to iTunes, search for Messages from the Masculine, you find my playlist, subscribe and download there. And as a reminder, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And uh, that's where you can find my replays. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond in the comments. You have your homework assignment too if you want to. 
And I'm curious to know your stories. What is it that you found that where well, you didn't get what you wanted first, but something better showed up in the, in the second place for that? Because sometimes coming second is a better thing than coming first. Um, oh, that's a bad joke's come up then. I'm leaving that alone. I appreciate you watching with me. With me as always, I'll be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual slot. And I thank you for watching as always. And I invite you to take care of yourself. You deserve the best. Give yourself permission to have it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.